Mrs Twit gets a stretching. Mr Twit led Mrs Twit outdoors where he had everything ready for the great stretching. He had 100 balloons and lots of string. He had a gas cylinder for filling the balloons. He had fixed an iron ring into the ground. Stand here, he said, pointing to the iron ring. He then tied Mrs Twit's ankles to the iron ring. When that was done, he began filling the balloons with gas. Each balloon was on a long string, and when it was filled with gas, it pulled on its string, trying to go up and up. Mr Twit tied the ends of the strings to the top half of Mrs Twit's body. Some he tied around her neck, some under her arms, some to her wrists, and some even to her hair. Soon there were 50 coloured balloons floating in the air above Mrs Twit's head. Can you feel them stretching you? asked Mr Twit. I can, I can, cried Mrs Twit. They're stretching me like mad. He put on another ten balloons. The upward pull became very strong. Mrs Twit was quite helpless now. With her feet tied to the ground and her arms pulled upwards by the balloons, she was unable to move. She was a prisoner and Mr Twit had intended to go away and leave her like that for a couple of days and nights to teach her a lesson. In fact, he was just about to leave when Mrs Twit opened her big mouth and said something silly. Are you sure my feet are tied properly to the ground? She gasped. If those strings around my ankles break, it'll be goodbye for me. And that's what gave Mr Twit his second nasty idea. Mrs Twit goes ballooning up. There's enough pull here to take me to the moon, Mrs Twit cried out. To take you to the moon, exclaimed Mr Twit. What a ghastly thought. We wouldn't want anything like that to happen. Oh dear me, no. We most certainly wouldn't, cried Mrs Twit. Put some more string around my ankles quickly. I want to feel absolutely safe. Very well, my angel, said Mr Twit. And with a ghoulish grin on his lips, he knelt down at her feet. He took a knife from his pocket and with one quick slash, he cut through the strings, holding Mrs Twit's ankles to the iron ring. She went up like a rocket. Help! she screamed. Save me! But there was no saving her now. In a few seconds, she was high up in the blue sky and climbing fast. Mr Twit stood below, looking up. What a pretty sight, he said to himself. How lovely all those balloons look in the sky. And what a marvellous bit of luck for me. At last, the old hag is lost and gone forever. Mrs Twit comes ballooning down. Mrs Twit may have been ugly and she may have been beastly, but she was not stupid. High up there in the sky, she had a bright idea. If I can get rid of some of these balloons, she said to herself, I will stop going up and I will start to come down. She began biting through the strings that held the balloons to her wrists and arms and neck and hair. Each time she bit through a string and let the balloon float away, the, the upward pull got less and her rate of climb slowed down. When she had bitten through 20 strings, she stopped going up altogether. and she stayed still in the air. She bit through one more string. Very, very slowly, she began to float downwards. It was a calm day. There was no wind at all. And because of this, Mrs Twit had gone absolutely straight up. She now, began to come absolutely straight down. As she floated gently down, Mrs Twit's petticoat billowed out like a parachute. 
showing her long knickers. It was a grand sight on a glorious day and thousands of birds came flying in from miles around to stare at this extraordinary old woman in the sky. Mr Twit gets a horrid shock. Mr Twit, who thought he had seen his ugly wife for the last time, was sitting in the garden celebrating with a mug of beer. Silently, Mrs Twit came floating down when she was about the height of the house. Above Mr Twit, she suddenly called out at the top of her voice, here I come, you grisly old grunion, you rotten old turnip, you filthy old crumpet. Mr. Twit jumped as though he'd been stung by a giant wasp. <gasps> he dropped his beer, he looked up, he gaped, he gasped, he gurgled. A few choking sounds came out of his mouth. Ugh, uh. He said, ah, ouch, I'll get you for this, shouted Mrs. Twit. She was floating down right on top of him. She was purple with rage and slashing the air of her long walking stick, which she had somehow managed to hang on to all the time. I'll swish you to a swazzle, she said. I'll swash you to a swizzle. I'll gnash you to a nozzle. I'll nosh you to a nazzle. And before Mr. Twit had time to run away, this bundle of balloons and petticoats and fiery fury landed right on top of him, <coughs> lashing out with the stick and cracking him all over his body. The house, the tree, and the monkey cage. But that's enough of that. We can't go on forever watching these two disgusting people doing disgusting things to each other. We must get ahead of, with the story. Here is a picture of Mr. and Mrs. Twit's house and garden. Some house. It looks like a prison and not a window anywhere. Who wants windows? Mr. Twitter said when they were building it. Who wants every Tom, Dick and Harry peeping in to see what we're doing? It didn't occur to Mr. Twit that windows were meant mainly for looking out of, not for looking into. And what do you think of that ghastly garden? Mrs. Twit was the gardener. She was very good at growing thistles and stinging nettles. I always grow plenty of spiker with thistles and plenty of stinging nettles, she used to say. They keep out nasty, nosy little children. Near the house, you can see Mr. Twit's workshed. To one side, there is a big dead tree. It never has any leaves on it because it's dead. And not far from the tree, you can see the monkey cage. There are four monkeys in it. They belong to Mr. Twit. You will hear about them later. Hug tight, sticky glue. Once a week on Wednesdays, the Twits had bird pie for supper. Mr. Twit caught the birds and Mrs. Twit cooked them. Mr. Twit was good at catching birds. On the day before bird pie day, he would put the ladder up against the big dead tree and climb into the branches with a bucket of glue and a paintbrush. The glue he used was something called hug tight and it was stickier than any other glue in the world. He would paint it along the tops of all the branches 
and then go away. As the sun set down, as the sun went down, birds would fly in from all around to roost on the, for the night in the big dead tree. They didn't know, poor things, that the branches were all smeared with horrible hug tight. The moment they landed on the branch, their feet stuck, and that was that. The next morning, which was bird pie day, Mr. Twit would climb up the ladder again and grab all the wretched birds that were stuck in the tree. It didn't matter what kind they were. Song thrushes, blackbirds, sparrows, crows, little Jenny wrens, robins, anything. They all went into the pot for Wednesday's bird pie supper. <laughs>